Hello, we are back on the docks today. I am with Michael Robilio. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Yes, I did, of Concord Marine Electronics. Today, we are going to learn about all things antennas and internet. Paul told me you're the expert, so I have a lot of questions for you. Okay, and I have a lot of answers. Great, so why don't you tell me where we're at today? Okay, right now, we're in front of the new Hargrave 86 Scorpio 2, and this is a boat that we were involved in the new build process and we did all the electronic systems on the boat and Hargrave has graciously allowed us to take a look and see what's going on. All right, let's see what's going on. So Michael, whenever we're walking up to the boat, is there any way for me to tell if a boat has satellite TV, high definition or standard definition? Well, by looking at the domes, you can tell what brand and what type of antennas they are. On the particular boat we're here with today, we've painted both domes so you can't see the labels from the manufacturer. But on most brand new boats of this size, they would never put on an antenna that's not high def. Um, but if you look at some of the other antennas in the marina here, like for example, this one over here says track vision, it says HD 11 right on the dome. So usually it's gonna say HD when it's a high def antenna, which is completely different from a standard def antenna. They look similar in size, but they're different internally. Okay, how about knowing the difference between, just by looking at it, cellular or satellite internet? Okay, so a satellite internet antenna is going to be very much the same as what we have here. If you look at all these boats, they've all got two. Nine times out of ten, one is TV and the other is satellite. Uh, it's called VSAT. And if you take a look here at this boat, you can see it's got two short antennas with black tops on it. Those are definitely cellular antennas. And as you look at some of the other antennas here on the other boats, uh, there's a lot of other cellular ones that are long eight footers. So nine times out of 10, they're gonna look very similar to what we got here, the, the white cylinder with the black top. Wonderful. Question number two, do all internet antennas look the same? Okay, so we've got three options. The first one is it could possibly look like one of those domes or one of these larger domes that we see on this next boat over here, or they could look like one of these two that I have in my hand. So this one talks to the dock, this one talks to the 4G tower, and the domes talk to the satellite. So the answer is no, they don't all look the same? That's correct, Okay. No. <laughs> Good. Michael, question number three, what are the different types of internet? There's three different types of internet. Uh, and they, they have to do with the source of the internet. So the first one is dockside, where your boat is talking to the marina or to the house that it's docked behind. The second is the 4G towers that are all over the place. And the third is the satellite. Okay, so I would assume there are different coverage areas with each type, is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, the, the one that only talks to the dock, maybe it'll get half a mile from the dock and then it's not gonna work anymore. So okay. it doesn't work while the boat's underway. The 4G towers work fantastic when you're underway, but you're limited to a maximum of 20 miles from that land-based tower. And the satellites work pretty much everywhere the boat's ever gonna go, maybe with the exception of the poles, but it's, and it works great, but it's slow and it's expensive, but you really get coverage no matter where you're at. So you mean I could be on Instagram in the middle of the ocean? Yes, you could. That's pretty cool. At home, I can use streaming services like Hulu and Netflix. Can I stream from a boat? Yes, you can. Uh, you're able to use DirecTV now, Hulu, Netflix, all of the streaming services. You need an account for those, of course. But depending on your internet source, they work very well. Uh, we have a lot of customers that do it when they stream from the dockside source that's available at the marina. Uh, they can do it very well with the 4G sources as long as you have a nice signal. Uh, and satellite will do it as well. The satellite's not quite as fast, so you can only have one streaming at a time, but it will work. So you can be pretty much anywhere and watch it. Hmm. So you're telling me I can watch Legally Blonde? Yes, you can. You can watch Legally Blonde as long as you have your internet connection installed by Concord Marine Electronics. Sounds good. How do I know what type of internet service is best for my client? The internet service that you're going to recommend is going to depend on the boat's cruising plans. If they're not really going anywhere, then being able to talk to the dock or to the house is enough because they're just going to use it when they're local. But if they're actually going to be traveling, the beauty of the 4G and the satellite systems is that it's going to work underway, but it's also going to give you a much broader geographic area that the boat can go. So for the majority of South Florida and all of the Bahamas, 4G is good, 
Uh, and if you're going to go south of the Bahamas, you're probably going to want to go to a satellite system so you've got a more reliable, robust system. The 4G gets a little sketchy when you get south of the Bahamas. But for this area, it's good. So really, you just need to know where they're going. And then from that, you know which way they should go with their Internet needs. Is there Wi-Fi throughout the boat like a house or are there different zones of Wi-Fi in different areas? Well, depending how the boat gets set up by the people who install the system, some boats only have one wireless access point and it only covers a small amount of the boat. But most new boats like this one have four or five access points throughout the boat that kind of hand off as you move from one area to the other. So it's a seamless thing, just like when you're at home. You can move around and you've got good coverage wherever you go. Now, some of the bigger boats put in multiple systems, one for the crew, one for the owner, one for guests, and it kind of splits who gets what speed and things like that. So they do get complex, but most boats have the coverage that you need with one network. Who provides the internet service? That's a great question. <laughs> Depending on where the boat's located depends on who provides it. So for example, for the satellite service, there's a lot of different providers. KVH is one that a lot of people know about. Isotropic is another one that a lot of people know about. And there's lots and lots of different satellite providers. It's the same with the 4G systems. Uh, here in the US, we have T-Mobile, we have AT&T, we have Verizon. Uh, in, the in the Bahamas, you've got BTC, you've got Alive. In the Caribbean, there's about five or six of them. Every island's got a different provider. So it really depends on where you are geographically to find out who the service provider is. And of course, when you're at the marina, the marina is your service provider. But when you're with the mobile options, the 4G and the uh, satellite, there's so many different options that you really need somebody to kind of guide you through it. Someone's got to tell you, okay, you're going to this island, you need this provider, you need that provider for that island. So you got to set up your itinerary. But with the satellite, you just pay your monthly bill and it doesn't matter where you are. So it, it is a little bit easier with the satellite, but it's more expensive. Is a boat's Wi-Fi secure, or do we need to worry about cyber attacks? Uh, a boat's Wi-Fi, just a, like everyone else's Wi-Fi, is only as secure as the passwords that you have on it. So when, when you're dealing with a mobile platform like a yacht, the Wi-Fi passwords are super critical. So they really need to be changed on a regular basis, but that's very difficult for a lot of people because it's once you remember it, it's, it's hard to get everybody to change it. But um, it's... When you use a 4G system, it's very secure, just like your cell phone. When you use satellite, it's very secure, just like your cell phone. But when you're talking to the dock, you're on a shared connection. So it's a lot like being at Starbucks. So I don't know that you do banking on the Starbucks shared Wi-Fi. So I wouldn't recommend doing anything secure on a shared connection like the dock. So as long as you're on a secure connection like the 4G or the satellite, it's good. On the dock, it's questionable. How do I log on to the boat's Wi-Fi? Well, logging into the boat's Wi-Fi when its system is set up properly is just like logging in at home or at a hotel. You're going to pick the name of the network, which is usually the boat's name, and then you're gonna put in the password. It's that simple. So what is the password? Well, it needs to be something more secure than password one, two, three. Fair enough. So Michael, how are you going to get those wires from the hardtop to the AV cabinet? Well, no two boats are the same. And generally we've got to pull down these overhead panels and we've got to open up the arch as you can see over here behind me. Sometimes you've got to pull out a refrigerator and just find that cable chase. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers put holes in and make it easy and others don't. But that's kind of our trade secret when we're in this business and we don't really share that. Well, I guess the great magician never tells his secret. Ready? What is this? <laughs> okay, so this piece right here is made by Pepwave, and it's a 4G uh, device that, as you can see here, has two SIM cards, one from AT&T and one from T-Mobile. And it's got these antennas here. These are the temporary antennas. Um, and we got some flashy lights on the front that tell you what the thing's doing. But what this does is pull internet from the 4G towers from either T-Mobile or AT&T, and it sends it through the LAN port 
to the rest of the boat so that the boat can share the internet. So this is a demo one that I brought, but the one that the boat is using is up here inside the overhead that I was playing with earlier. And that one is connected to the external antennas that are outside the boat to give you the 20 miles from the tower and still have a nice high speed internet signal that's gonna allow you to stream and zoom and do email and do everything you need to do with your internet connection. So then we have this one, and this one is made by Aegean, and this one is designed to connect to a dockside source, whether it's the marina, whether it's your house, whether it's another boat. This will pull in a signal from about half a mile away, and the way we have it set up is this unit is attached to this unit, and this one has an internal switch that allows you to decide which of these two sources feeds your network on the boat. So we can do the same thing with a satellite antenna hooked into one of these. And now you have a switch that allows you to decide really cost effectively which internet source you're going to use so that you can pick speed, cost, whatever you need. If you're, if you're in a remote anchorage in the middle of nowhere, then the satellite's going to be the way to go. And with the software in here, you select the satellite. And if you're at home and you don't want to pay for internet, you're going to select this one and it's going to connect to the dock at home and connect to what you have there so you're not paying for internet. So there's th these little, little gadgets give you all kind of options for how you're going to get your internet and what the cost is going to be and it allows you to really get the right experience for yourself and your guests. So that's kind of what these goodies do. All right. If my client is going to charter the boat, is there any way the crew can track how much internet they're using? Yep, there's, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. Um, the Pepwave box does tell you how much internet you've used for each source. Uh, and you've also got the internet service providers can send you a report. But sometimes the report from the provider might be too long to arrive before the charter ends. So, But this Pepwave device has the capability of letting us know how much data was used and from which source. So it's a, a great piece of equipment. So now let's talk price. Okay, this is usually the difficult part um, because after hearing where you need it and where you want to go and what you, you should be using, everybody wants satellite, but that's when the hard part starts. So I'm going to start with the least expensive when we talk about price and that's going to be the dockside equipment. So the one that I had in my hand before uh, that was a mushroom and talked to the dock, that particular piece of equipment costs about $1,000 and it's probably another thousand to put it in. Uh, so it's not, it's not that expensive. There's other ones that are bigger and higher power and have a bigger range. And so maybe for that dockside piece of equipment, you would be anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 to have it installed. Um, and that's the entry level piece. Uh, the airtime is going to be whatever the marina or the dock charges you. I don't, I, I'm not sure, I know some marinas charge per day uh, for access to what they have, but that's going to be your most cost effective. The problem there is that it's not secure, but it is cost effective. Uh, so the next step up in price is going to be the 4G system. And the entry level ones can be anywhere between two and 6,000 when they're installed. And the airtime per month can be anywhere between 250 a month and 650 a month depending on what kind of plan you choose. Um, what we sell the most of to our clients is the unlimited plan where everybody on the boat can use as much internet as they want and it never slows down. So that's anywhere from, it starts at 500 and AT&T is 650. So that's the choice for the boats that are have a lot of people that maybe crew live aboard and stuff like that. Um, so the next grade up is the satellite. And when you talk about it, everybody wants it. Um, but an entry level satellite system that would feed a boat like this with four or five users, entry level is going to be about $8,000. But the systems that are a lot faster that are really going to give you the streaming experience that we talked about earlier, those are in the forty dollars to $50,000 price range. And the airtime on those is $1,500 to up to 10,000 a month, depending on how much data you want to pull out of that satellite. So there's some new stuff coming down the pipe uh, for satellites and for 4G. 
Uh, Pep Wave has got 5G equipment coming out now, and it's going to be a little bit more than the two to 6,000, but it's going to give you a lot more speed. And with the internet and with multi-users on the boat, you really want as much speed as you can get because everybody's using it all the time. And that's fine when you're in the U.S. and you live in the U.S. and you have a U.S. phone plan, great, you have unlimited. But as soon as you go to the Bahamas or you go down island, now you're running international and your phone plan's not going to be enough when it's roaming. So we've got a lot of options. And if you want to give me a shout, send me an email, give me a call at Concord Marine Electronics, and we can sit and talk about the best options for you and your guests. Great. So if our viewers do want to get in contact with you, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, best way is the office, 954-779-1100. Okay. Well, thank you, Michael. Paul was right. He is the expert on all things internet, antennas, and connectivity while at sea and even docked here right in the marina. So thank you, Michael. We will see you next time after a short commercial break. Thank you. Yacht Engineering Week 2021 has been made possible by Pantropic Power, the only authorized Caterpillar Power Systems dealer in South Florida. Florida Nautical Surveyors, your complete solution to all of your vessel surveying needs. And Robert Allen Law, exclusively dealing with the business of yachting. We would also like to thank Quantum Stabilizers, AME Solutions, D'Angelo Exhaust, MPI Marine Professionals Incorporated, Concord Marine Electronics, Lauderdale Marine Center, Marine Data, Isotropic, Dockmate, and Murray Ventilation Products. Thank you for joining us this year. We'll see you in 2022.